The Israeli military is conducting raids across the occupied West Bank. At least 10 Palestinians have been arrested. Soldiers stormed several cities, including Ramallah, Nablus, Tulkarem, and Jenin, where Israeli bulldozers have destroyed roads and infrastructure. At least 341 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank since October the 7th. Let's talk now to Mohammed Jamjoum. He joins us from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. And Mohammed, another night of raids across the territory and soldiers once again destroying roads and other infrastructure. That's right, Elizabeth. These raids, uh, which happen on average around 40 times a day, have really become part of the fabric of daily life for Palestinians throughout the occupied West Bank. You mentioned several of the raids that happen in the overnight hours. You also have to add to that uh, Beit Rima and the Al-Fawad refugee camp in the south of the occupied West Bank. The two most significant raids that we should mention right now are the ones that took place in the city of Jenin and also in Nablus. Now, when it comes to Jenin, that raid, we are told, ended just around two hours ago. When that raid was going on, as you mentioned, infrastructure was, dis were dis uh, infrastructure was destroyed in the city of Jenin, and we are told by eyewitnesses there that even roads were dug up by Israeli bulldozers. This is one of the tactics that we keep hearing about that's being used by the Israeli army when they go in to the cities and areas and villages and towns and refugee camps that they raid repeatedly. Um, now, when it comes to Janine, also we're told that uh, in its eastern neighborhood of the city that there were explosive devices that were used against uh, Israeli army forces that were raiding the city when that raid was ongoing. Uh, beyond that, you had the raid that happened in Nablus, and we are told that it looks as though that raid might be ending now, that it looks to residents there as though Israeli forces are withdrawing. But uh, when that raid was ongoing a few hours ago, we're told that uh, there was gunfire that was going off there, that uh, there were fighters that were targeting Israeli forces during the raid. Uh, many confrontations erupted there between Palestinian fighters as, and the Israeli armed forces that were raiding the area. That's according to local media and eyewitnesses that we have been reporting. As you mentioned, Elizabeth, uh, this uh, so far since October 7th, there have been 341 Palestinians killed throughout the occupied West Bank. Elizabeth? Yes, Mohammed, there's certainly a charged atmosphere, isn't it, in the West Bank as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken meets the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. It is. Uh, that meeting, Elizabeth, is scheduled to take place in about three hours from now. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken coming to Ramallah to meet with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Now, this is going to be difficult because every time that Blinken has met with Abbas when he's been uh, in the region, in the area, when he's come to Ramallah, not much has come of those meetings. The last time he was here, the meeting lasted under an hour, and really there was no result. There's a lot of expectation about that meeting today, but it's unclear exactly what will be discussed. Now, Blinken, yesterday, after his meeting with Israeli officials and with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, had stated in his press conference to assembled media in Tel Aviv that he would like to see Israeli officials make it easier for the Palestinians to govern themselves. He also wants to see a pathway for the creation of a Palestinian state. But what is Blinken bringing that would allow that to happen, that would ensure a roadway for that to happen? Nobody knows at this point. There are also other challenges when it comes to the U.S. expectations for the Palestinian Authority, perhaps taking control in Gaza after the war there ends. There's been a lot of discussion in the past few months about how the U.S. would like to see the Palestinian Authority perhaps back in control in Gaza in a day after the war scenario. Now, a recent poll found that almost two-thirds of Palestinians are opposed to the Palestinian Authority participating in meetings even to discuss Gaza's future after the war ends. Beyond that, this poll, which was conducted in December with Palestinians, found that 60 percent of Palestinians said that Hamas should be in control in Gaza after the war. And beyond that, this poll found that only 16 percent of Palestinians said that a Palestinian Authority unity government without Palestinian uh, sh should, should be in control and that if it were to be, that it should be without 
Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas as its head. So that really goes to show the lack of trust in the Palestinian Authority by a majority of Palestinians, the challenges that lie ahead. There's yes. a lot riding on this meeting. Of course, Blinken would like to see the Palestinian Authority step up and do more. Would they be able to? And then would the people support them if that were to happen as well? So there's a lot to be discussed, a lot of expectations, and we'll just have to wait and see what is the result of this meeting later in the day. Elizabeth? Mohammed, thank you so much for that. Mohammed Jamjoum live in Ramallah.